So I'm gonna do a quick movie review here of what's it called? Um, the Wild Robot. I saw two mo movies today, but we're gonna do this one first, and we're trying to make it quick because my phone is going to heat up if I don't do the video real fast. But um, yeah, The Wild Robot. I liked it right off the bat. Right, it's uh, I liked it. It's a very nice movie. It's emotional. It's an emotional film. It's a movie that got this little plastic thing and I can take it off too. But it's uh it's got emotional depth to it, that film. And it's it's real nice. I like the possum character, I like the mom possum. The mama possum. And I like the, the fox. It reminds me of Nick Wilde. And I wonder if maybe when they were making the movie, they thought about that. If, you know, it'd be kind of a parallel between Nick Wilde and and the other guy. And um, I think his name's Flick or something like that. Something along those lines. The character's name is Flick. And... Now, I wonder if you can hear that. That's my, my car. I don't know what it is. Like, the radio makes weird clicking noise when I open it, but... I'm just gonna try to ignore it. Yeah, the fox's name is Flick, and... The, they gets to become friends. They kind of have, like, this funny, like, a... He's the dad, and, and she's the mom kind of relationship. It's kind of funny. Because he lives inside the house with her. Because she makes a house, right? Um, Roz. She calls... She says, you can call me Roz, but I think her name is... Oh, I forgot what it was. She, she's a robot, so she has a robot name. So her name isn't exactly anything. And it's numbers, and she even names, like, the little ducky. Um, Bright Bill, that's the duck's name. Or the goose, rather. It's not a duck, he's a goose. Right, we, he, we name him Bright Bill later, but that's only because Flick encourages her to do so. Because Flick is like, how you gonna name... How you gonna name him... Oh, a st like, a stupid fucking name. <laughs> he said you're gonna name him numbers. It's like you didn't even care about him. How you gonna do that? Oh, you gotta give him a cooler name than that. And so, you know, he eventually she does, right? She gives him a a name. And I like that it's kind of like the first thing she thought of in her head, Bright Bill. It just kinda of came to her. I mean, I like that the duck, Bright Bill, he mimics he mimics um his mom. Because you know, he thinks that he thinks that's his mom, right? He said, Oh, that's my mother, right? It's uh Roz is my mom and how do you call uh he he mimics her he like he does the scanning intelligent light form i thought maybe he was like mimicking or maybe she told him like oh, you want to scan your surroundings but no he actually uh he he does he does this naturally like he doesn't give it any thought as for a second thought he'll just do this action right and that, that was kind of cute. That little, um, when he says, oh, I'm having trouble making friends. Yeah, no shit, kid. Because <laughs> they're, they're, like, weird. They're, like, everybody can see that. They're, like, that's weird. I like that they call her the monster. So, it's an island. We're on an island. And we're in the Pacific Northwest. And we see in the film that global warming has occurred, right? It has already occurred in this timeline in the movie. Because um, we get this shot of the Golden Gate Bridge and there's whales swimming. Like the bridge is halfway submerged and we can see whales swimming over the top of it. Obviously, that bridge is pretty high above water. So that gives us an indicator of like sea levels have rose drastically. Quite drastically, actually. Yeah, in this film, I, I didn't feel preachy about the... Because I know when I saw the trailer excerpt with the voice of Roz and she was talking about oh save the earth and be good to the planet type deal she had this whole spiel that she was saying probably she got paid for it right but I was thinking when I heard that oh maybe this film is going to be like a little preachy about the environment type stuff but no it's not preachy at all it's uh it's pretty subtle I won't even have imagined it was about the environment like that I guess harmony with the animals because but I guess Ross, because Ross kind of teaches, Ross makes some, they have this rule, I like this kind of rule established for the hut when winter comes. If you're in the hut, you can't attack at anybody, you can't kill anybody. It's kind of a funny film in that regard where some of the animals there are aware, like, you know, this guy, you know, this person maybe is going to eat me one day. But right now, for the moment, we're just sitting, talking, enjoying each other's company. <laughs> 
But like one day, maybe they say, fuck it, I want to eat you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase you. I'm going to chase you around. And and um, I'm talking to you now, being all friendly. But later down the line, you better start running because I'm hungry and I'm going to want to eat you. Even Flick. Flick wants to eat Butterbill at first in the initial beginning. Like way in the beginning, actually. He steals Butterbill's egg. He steals the egg. because, And I think, and even, it, it only happened. The only way Roz... Because it was true. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't intentional. The only reason Ross destroyed the nest was because she was being chased by that bear. <laughs> the bear that subsequently um, has more of a presence towards the end of the film. Where he's like, yeah, it's okay. I won't eat you. We're inside this uh, space. I won't eat you. This is, It's an island. We, we establish as an island when she goes to this top of the point. We don't go to a full 360 panoramic view but we do like a pretty cl damn close to it and we can see there's water all around so that shot establishes besides them telling us it's an island and we even get a shot of an overview map of the island that shot alone there it establishes that we're on an island so that was cool and it's like my, it's like wonderfully shot the animation is kind of unique I like how the animation looks animation I think that's the word I like when Ross um, cause she has like Butter, Butter Bill, Bright Bill Bright Bill gets upset with her about like Oh not telling me like the family And he, and Flick mentions this Early in the film, he says oh you should you know You should make a point to tell The kid that You killed uh, that you know You accidentally killed the family or well, Actually no I think he says like don't mention it I think he said cause he knows that, oh, that's gonna be bad news Later on, don't mention that Just kinda keep it to yourself, leave it alone Um in, in the film he says that he mentions that the what was I thinking in my head but yeah they have a falling out and um I like when that older I think his name's Longneck Longneck tells uh Brightbill you know hey you don't appreciate what she's done for you you know cause he says I think he says oh I, I recognize that and he he stops him right away he said no you don't you don't appreciate what she's done for you and yeah she may not be your mom she might have accidentally killed your family um but he made a point to tell him which was what the utter... That's even what Flick mentioned in the beginning. You only have a defective bird. This bird is tiny. I thought maybe they're making like mental defects. But I guess it wouldn't mean it's physical. Is that uh, he's smaller than all the other geese. And in Longneck tells him this. He says, look around you. You see any other geese your size? Exactly. You were, you were not meant to live. But thanks to her nurturing you and all this, you lived. <laughs> yeah, because she has this thing where she's like a task. She needs a task she's a helper bot she's a robot made to help humans live better have good lives and we're like in the future in this film we're like in the jetsons like future i like that little contrast there we're in like the jetsons type future in this movie where the city has like this giant fucking dome and robots are everywhere doing the work for humans and we do see humans but they have like I think when we see a person, they literally have like this this shit over their they have like a helmet on. Oh my god, it looks it's like wow, we're in that we're like in future, future, future. We're like in this dystopian kind of weird fucking future. But um yeah, I like this film. It's nice. I liked it very much. It's called The Wild Robot. She even says it at some point in the movie. She says, I am a wild robot, you know. <laughs> but she does go back. She does go back to the humans, actually. And I think she did, she did that for their protection. That's what it was. So it hints that maybe there'd be a number two. But yeah, she was right about that. Because the evil robot tentacle thing. That you just knew it was evil. The minute we got her talking. And then she's like rubbing her tentacles on her. You just got the vibe. Like, oh, she's evil. She's bad news. But um, even after that whole fiasco. I was, like, I was going to say something in my head. Yeah, she goes back to the humans because, you know, she tells her, like, we know where you are now. So we're obviously going to keep coming back. Yeah, like, the information you have is priceless. We need to, um, you know, do something with it. And, but yeah, that's what happens with that. And it's a nice movie. It's good. I liked it very much. The Wild Robot movie review, I guess. Thoughts. Thank you for listening. <laughs>